So listen, this is the important part, that we should be what? That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from who, Trev? Our enemies. So earlier we identified our enemies what? Put us into slavery, right? We identified our enemies own all the resources and we have to follow their processes, right? We identified they own all the banks. These are the curse wonders. So the salvation that the children of Israel were looking for is for us to be saved from our enemies, right? Meaning what? If you are getting saved, right, from a rapist, is the rapist going with you? No. Shalom. What you're watching is unlike anything you ever seen before. Unlike any pastor, unlike any motivational speaker, unlike anything you ever seen in your community. What we do as Israel United in Christ is we come and we reach out to build a bridge between our people and the Bible. We show them their true nationality. Shalom. Okay, you don't want to yell, I hear you. Okay, so mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. where, or is there a place, I'm going to ask it this way, is yep. there a place in the Bible yep. where Jesus mm -hmm. was criticized yep. for healing on the Sabbath? There is. And if so, mm -hmm. who criticized him? The Pharisees. And how did he respond? Okay, where are we? Let's come then. I'm gonna finish trail. I wanna make sure trail understands I'm coming in. You got the question? You got it? You got it? race. Okay. You got a question? No? The question on the floor, the trail, do you understand? I wanna make sure you understand for a moment. Yeah, who does God create? We dealt with that earlier. We read Proverbs 16 and 4. So, but am I like right. <laughs> so the, 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 the thing we gotta make sure we're clear about, right? It's not about uh just the way somebody looks that identifies a bloodline, right? It's it's if you're under the curse. So people can look at all ranges of colors, right? You might look a certain way. That doesn't uh this will know you or take you out of what the Lord's saying. It's not about how you look per se as much as it do you fit what the Bible talks about. So blacks, Hispanics, and natives all fit what the Bible talks about, right? If my dad sinned, if my dad was in sin. Yeah, you don't. You don't care. Not carry. But sorry, yeah, that's a great question. But do you carry the sins of your father? In what sense? What do you mean? Because like if you're the product of your sins? No, no, no. I'm saying you. I'm saying you don't. You are responsible for yourself. Okay. You have. You have to do opposite. Before I go to somebody, uh, she had a question. You, somebody had asked about interracial marriage. Yeah, you can come back to me. You yeah, I'm, I'm gonna come back to you. So her question was about the sin. Right? Yeah, man. Yeah, let's go to that. Her question was, did on the, when Christ uh, healed on the Sabbath day, did they come to him and criticize him for healing on the Sabbath day? Go ahead, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 12. What did he say, and how did he respond? Yeah, we're going to read it. Matthew. You already know the answer, though, right? Okay, so what's the question, really? No, 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 that's not the question. But I'm saying, what's the question? It's a question yeah. that fits into your discussion on do not work on the Sabbath. I'm with you, so sir. I'm asking, you want me to show was them? Jesus ever criticized as you were criticizing here? I didn't criticize. You're, you're saying you're, you're, you're I had to show them what they're doing wrong. I understand. Did Jesus you're cut hair on the Sabbath? Lovingly. You're doing it lovingly, nonetheless. Did Jesus cut hair on the Sabbath? I, I've asked my question. You okay. have the floor. All right. We're going we're gonna to go past that because she knows the answer. Jesus... Well, you want? Do you have a question about it, or you just want to read it for the sake of reading? Her, her thing is, her thing. She's asking, right? She's saying, I criticize y'all on the Sabbath. If you're in sin, what am I supposed to do? Give me Leviticus 19 and verse 17. Right. That's my point. So, so now when when Christ when Christ came, right, and they were criticizing him, they were criticizing him what to try to entrap him in something. All I'm doing is showing you what the Bible says. Maybe you've never seen it. You see? That's the difference, right? Leviticus 19 and 17. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. And then my brother right here on the phone, what's your name with the glasses? Jordan. Jordan, we're going to come to you. So I'm going to deal with interracial marriage, so you understand, right? Read that. Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Now, hatred to us, what hatred looks like to us might be people talking loud, right? It might be looking like going back and forth, but he said, we shall not hate our brother. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So if your brother is doing something wrong, you were to correct him, to rebuke him. So the opposite of hating him was correcting him. That's what we haven't learned. We don't correct each other. If somebody is wrong in our community, we just walk by and say, that's not my business. But he said, that's hatred. If you hate them, you're going to let them do what they do. But if you love them, you're going to rebuke them. You're going to correct them. Go ahead. And not suffer sin upon them. So he said, you, you want to what? He said, you want to suffer sin upon them. 
know you right? be called you what? I don't think so. <laughs> but I Bert. read it again. Verse 17, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor uh -huh. and not suffer sin upon him. So you're not to what? Allow him to sin. You see what I'm saying? So this is love according to the Bible. Watch. Here's how you know. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear what, any grudge. Hold on. Wait. What you say? In what context are we speaking right now when you talk about brother? Are we still talking about brother as in children of Israel or Correct. brother as... Because it has to say brother because we related. We're related. Exactly. So when we're reading the Bible and we, we're reading it from... I guess from y'all's perspective, as a misunderstanding, yep. brother is not everybody. Not Christian brother is referring to brother by blood. Okay. Because remember, he said you should rebuke your neighbor. Where is your neighbor? But at? is it okay to rebuke those who are not my brother though? You but can. my neighbor. John the Baptist did it, but he got his head cut off for doing so. You can, right? It's not wrong with that. Your, your job, your job in the earth was to be the example of righteousness for everyone. Right. So you you are supposed to rebuke sin where you see it, but. The point here that he's making is what? They were amongst each other. So he's saying what? You shall rebuke thy neighbor. Where we live next, our tents is lined up next door to each other. So if I see you in sin, I'm supposed to go what? Say, yo, you're breaking the Sabbath. You're not supposed to do that. Right? I'm supposed to correct my neighbor. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. I see, your people is your neighbor. So I shouldn't see you in any type of sin, identify it, and then hold the grudge, be like, man, that dude was sinning. I'm supposed to let you know. I'm supposed to get that off my chest. Go ahead. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Loving your neighbor as you love yourself is what? Correcting your neighbor. That's what we haven't learned. So when Christ came and he said what? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. He was saying correct your neighbor, right? Like you would want to be correct. Neighbor and brother are the same? Correct. But so my neighbor so my neighbor cannot also be my brother. Your neighbor could I mean, be. I mean, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I tell you. I guess yeah. what I'm trying to say is me and this dude right here, right? Yep. That's my neighbor. Yep. He don't come from Israel. Like, so, no, no, like. No, 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 no. I, I'm trying to understand. In the context ahead, of the culture, go. you wouldn't live anywhere near him. If Correct. You but okay, so but right now I live I live in America. I'm enslaved in America, so I live next to everybody. Correct. Now if I live next to everybody, now think about this now. Think about this, right? The context that is in right here was referring to who? getting who right. Us. So who gets salvation when the Lord returns? So who were we? Who are we supposed to make sure is right? That's there. You go. There goes the answer. But I understand that. Think about this. You go to your neighbor who's who's a uh, who's a Catholic. You go next door, right? European man. You run next door. You say you need to stop doing what you're doing right now and stop buying and cooking. What's gonna happen to you? What benefit will you get from that? Nothing. But if he's there you if, go. If, something, there you go. There you if something's wrong, if something happens, something's happening to him, and I have the ability to help him as a good oh, as yeah. a human. Yeah, I, guess, I guess that's what I'm trying to get down yeah, to. Get yeah, can you help people? Yeah, you can help people. Yeah. Like if I if I went outside and I saw somebody drop papers on the floor, they uh, somebody's trying to rob them or that's something. What I was like, to get yeah, you can somebody, do that. Okay, so yeah, yeah. There's nothing in the Bible that's against it. There's no law against doing good. As that's a matter of fact, right? No. Read that Romans 12 and verse 18. Let's answer your question. What say? No. No, I, yeah, I understand. I was saying talking like, about the Samaritan. The Samaritan was an Israelite. I, I'm saying, but yeah, the person wasn't. Yeah, the Samaritan was an Israelite woman. So. Watch this real quick. Romans 12 and verse 18. Romans, is the Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Can you, do, can you do good to everyone? Yes, the Israelites are commanded to. Romans 12, verse 18. Why? If it be possible, uh -huh. as much as lies in you. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, as much as you can restrain yourself, right? Go ahead. Live peaceably with all men. You see what it said? So we're supposed to live peaceably with all men. Right? So that's your answer. My brother over here, what was your name? Jordan. Jordan, okay. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7. What we do Remember what I told you, you carry your own sin, but I'm going to show you interracial marriage in the Bible that that is a sin. Now, the, yeah. the option you have, right, is to either do that or not do that, right? We're going to read it. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Uh -huh. neither, neither shall thou make marriages with them. So, he said you should not make marriages with them. Go ahead. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. Thy daughter shall you not give unto his son. And this time, right, they were going into a certain land to conquer the people there. He said, when you get there, don't give your daughter to their sons, right? Don't give your son to their daughter. Go ahead. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Uh-huh. For they will turn away thy son from following me. He said they will turn away your son from following the Lord of the Bible. Why? Because they were caught up in different idolatry. Most young boys, who they go to church with? Their daddy or their mommy? You went to church with your dad? Yeah. Did your mom go to church? Yeah. Okay, that's different. Most of us, right, our mother is, is, is heavily in the church and our fathers, they stay home. 
right? For the for the majority, right? At least at least the majority of people I know, right? So their their mother was the one trying to push uh, some discipline. So the mother tends to hold the religion and also be the first okay, so teacher of the kid, deal with this right? Person, though, since huh? It was not his situation. I could deal with that. I could deal with that. It said, "Thy son or thy daughter, they will turn away from following me." So now keep going. Watch. I'm gonna deal with you. That they may serve other gods. That they may serve other gods, right? An example of you serving another god, right? For an example, what does Jesus look like? Brown. He was brown according to what? Blue eyes, white hair. You see? You see, Jordan? He's trolling. He's trolling. He's trolling? You sure? Yeah, he's, he's, he's you trolling. sure? Yeah, they're, they're like, sure. like bronze. Okay, all right, all right. So you understand it. Okay, now, now, Jesus is Puerto Rican, my goodness. No, no, he was an Israelite, right? So the Wait, Port aren't Puerto Ricans Israelites? Puerto Ricans are Israelites. Right, yeah, we know hey, they see, see, see? What? <laughs> Very, very. He's playing games. <laughs> Jesus was not Puerto Rican, right? Jesus was not Puerto Rican, right? He, he was the Israelite from the tribe of Judah, right? But the, the point I'm making here, what? It's interracial marriage, that was the issue with it. They would turn you away from your religion because what? The mother would preach your religion, right? Or the son would be influenced by the woman and he would follow other religions. Give me that in Second Chronicles, I think, 9 with Solomon. Is that why if you're... No, go ahead. I want to hear it. You can't do that. You can't. Why you can't stop building up and then let it go. Does it matter which one of your parents is? is no, my brother. It does. It does. Watch. Read. Uh, read Numbers chapter one. Is that what I want to tell him? Uh, watch this, watch this. I'm so now watch it. We're gonna look at number yeah, seven, right? See. The question I ask: If you take an apple seed, right, and you plant it somewhere else, what will it grow? Like? An apple. So the seed dictates what fruit you're gonna get, right? Yes. Okay. Numbers chapter one, verse eighteen. Watch this. Numbers chapter one, verse eighteen. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. They declared who they were in that family lot based upon what? Their father, right? The reason that they did that, we do the chapter 15 and verse 16. There was a reason that they declared their family lot based upon their father. Right? Going back to the analogy of the Jews. Leviticus chapter 15 verse 16 And if any man's seed of copulation uh -huh. Go out from him Then he shall wash all his flesh in water And be clean unto each So the man has a what in him? Seed. seed That seed is then implanted in what? The woman, right? So the man carries what? The nation? The nationality that you're from, right? So that's how it works So no, regardless of what woman he goes and lays with, right? We know it's sin to be an interracial marriage the seed remains the same, just like that apple seed, right? That's why I read, uh, I think that's Romans 1, verse 3. Read Romans 1, verse 3. So to our sisters that were uh, raped and pillaged, mm. and they bore children, but yep. those children grew up and had black children, yep. and those children grew up and had more black children. Correct. So, like, what does that mean? For that, like, feature-wise, they would look like us, right? Right. Right, but in terms of nationality, right? That's the thing, right? So the point out the point we gotta see, I'm gonna show you why. Because I'm gonna answer you, I'm gonna answer you, I'm gonna answer you. If a daughter if a daughter if a, if a, if a woman is raped, yep. but she has a daughter, yep. but it, it, that daughter could go with, get with an Israelite, get to an Israelite man. Then it, then then it, the but that's that's exactly my point to him, right? I'm gonna show him a scripture that helps with that. Cause because if we start going down that rabbit hole and we can't even go two generations back, right. we won't have problems. That's my 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 lady stops at 1888. So here we go. But that, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna answer your question. Read this first. So we'll stay on time. In the states. Because all that matters is that's my, my dad. Yeah, my dad. Right. My dad is black. Derek, I got him. I got him. Romans one verse three. Romans, right. Romans chapter one verse three. Uh -huh. Concerning the Son Jesus, uh -huh. Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. He, his father was David. He came from that family line, so he descended directly from David, right? So he would have been an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's what Christ was. So, so you understand. So, I'm just showing you that to see, show you how seed dictated family life. Now, to your point, give me that. Timothy, about genealogy. Wait. Well, you're going to genealogy. How do you reconcile the two different genealogies that's 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 that's
right? And her fathers. And one is Jesus' fathers. And Luke, you have Mary's father's line. And Matthew has Jesus' family line. There, there's not a difference uh, in terms of uh, uh, where they descend from ultimately, but it's showing you different fathers because one is actually Mary's father. Why does it matter what Mary's father was? It's showing you that he came from royal lineage regardless on both sides. You understand? Know on both sides, Jesus was royal. That's what it's showing you. That's it. Go ahead. Uh, first That's a good question. First Timothy. You, there, you read the Bible? Yeah. How do you know that? Oh, yeah, I'm going to just got well, I, I, I'm not gonna, <laughs> You got to read the Bible to know that. Go ahead, read that. Well, I, go ahead. No, it matters. Go ahead. First Timothy chapter 4. No, I want to know. I want to know what you want to say. I read it. More so out of courtesy. 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 The things in there that you're trying to Okay. And, and the reason you're right, yeah, 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 because there's a lot of time that passed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think it's some? Do you think? Do you think it's some deeper in you that that's curious to like get like not? Because you read a lot of different things. Uh, do you, do you, like, yeah, so do you so think it's something in you that just like like as far as that curiosity of like what you want to know? I think I, I, I'm pretty sure everybody should have like a curiosity of like, oh, where do we come from? How do we get here? Is that so. That's a good point. So now I'm going to read this and I'm going to go somewhere with what you just said. Right? Because we got to wrap up saying we got to go back. So Timothy on the genealogy and then I want to read something for you. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. He said, don't give heed to endless genealogies. Why, Jay? Because if we start trying to trace our genealogy all the way back, and it'd be very difficult for you to reconcile who was who, given the fact that names change and so on and so forth. So that's why we read, go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 46. That's why Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is so important. Because the Lord says something in Deuteronomy 28, verse 46 that is very important. Because all of our all of our lineages, right, and you start going back, about three or four, uh, uh, four or five is back, you're stuck. You don't know who, right? So why should he say that? Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. Uh -huh. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. He said the curses will be upon you for a sign. Remember earlier, Jay? Was talking about those persons. Wait, 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 wait. Before you I'm go, dealing with those right. things. Right? What, what kind of books do you read? Go ahead. What kind of books do you read? I don't know what to say. Why? Oh, uh, we're talking about a Okay. Sorry, yeah, I, I, I actually was getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. So I'm trying to listen. <laughs> we got to get through. I'm 24 I'm making my cut back here. I ain't even noticed this. <laughs> Oh He's in the bag. He's in the bag. Deuteronomy 28 verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter. Came out scared the hell out of my man. Deuteronomy 28 verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 46. Okay. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, uh -huh. and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So the curses are upon us forever, right? As a sign. That's the thing we got to see. The reason we wonder, or the reason Derek is curious, is because what? He's going through hell hard. So he's trying to find a solution. Same way I was, right? So give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 12. Let's start there. The thing you're going to find there, no matter how much you say, everything going to go back to the Bible. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with that cross and I'm out of here. Right? You got to take that down. Right? I hope you did. Well, Lord willing, whoever it is, you're going to tell them this message. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. Uh-huh. And further, yep. by these, my son. He said, so Solomon's talking, right? Solomon was the wisest king that ever lived. He said, by these, my son, go ahead. Be admonished. Uh -huh. Of making many books, there is no end. He said, of making many books, there's no end to read. It's not wrong with reading, but what we do is we read every single book to try to find an answer. He said, I read all the books. There's no end to reading books. Go ahead. And much study is a weariness of flesh. All it does is it makes your flesh weary to read book after book after book trying to find an answer. Right? I did the same exact thing. You know what I always end up is the Bible, right? Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's get a conclusion of everything, right? I read all these books, I did all this study, and let's find out what I found out, right? Let me tell you what I learned from everything I read. Go ahead. Fear God. Simple, right? Fear God, meaning what? Don't break the Sabbath, don't steal, don't be a homeowner, right? Don't be a adult, so don't be caught up in an interracial marriage. Live right by God, go ahead. And keep his commandments. Simple, right? That's what he found out after he did all his study. And this was the wisest king that ever lived. So what we tend to do when we study is we looking for answers. But Solomon looked for the answers already. Right? So I ain't saying don't read, don't don't research and look things up. But what we try to do is we try to find a lot of times how to get right with God or what God wants from us. What God wants from us is read verse 13 one more time. Let us fear, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Uh -huh. For this is the whole duty of man. That's the whole importance of man, right? The reason we were created was to fear God. And keep his commandments. And the reason we're in this position that we're in today is because we don't fear God and we don't keep his commandments. Would you agree, Jay? What about you, Trey? You agree? I agree. Okay, so that's why we're in this position today. Dare you agree? 
No, I already know you was gonna be a skeptic, right? I mean, nigga, I knew you was gonna be a skeptic, but I like it. What you, what I want you to do there is I always want you to go and I want you to research everything I'm saying is in the Bible. That's the Habakkuk, right? On that cross. Back into a rotation. Jay, Jordan, you, uh, you wear a cross? Uh, you do? Do you have one in your house? I don't. Okay, good. Good. Watch this. Habakkuk chapter two, verse eighteen. I'm gonna show you two scriptures on that cross, right? And we'll go. What profit if the graven image? You said, what benefit is that cross up there, right? Because today we learned a lot of stuff. What the nationality of the people of the book was, right? The curses that they were faced. So what's the benefit to that cross? It didn't teach us nothing. Go ahead. That the maker thereof have graven it. He said, what's the purpose that the person has made that, right? Why did they grave that cross? Go ahead. The molten image. Uh -huh. And a teacher of lies. We learn more lies under that cross than anything else. That's why we're so confused. Because Christianity told us that Jesus is white. It told us you can do whatever you want. It told us that uh, uh, some people learn that slaves... Right, was supposed to be subject to their masters, and they understand that to be something, and that's not true according to the Bible. It's confusion behind that cross because we learned it in oppression. So it's a teacher of lies. Go ahead. That the maker of his work trusted therein uh -huh. to make dumb idols. That's a dumb idol according to the Lord. Go ahead. Woe unto them that say to the wood, Awake. The wood is going into that cross. Woe, destruction unto them that say to that cross, Arise. A lot of people, they wear a cross, right? And then when they're going through something, they hold on it. Or when you pray in Catholicism, you have the cross and you use the rosary beads and you make the repetition over and over and you say to the cross, to the wood, Awake. What we read today, in order for God to work with us, we got to be doing what? Repent. And do what? Follow praying. And then what else? And keep what? Keep the commandments. There you I go. Believe it, I mean, there you I go. Agree. There are you listening. I, there you gonna repent too. It's gonna happen. It's gonna take time. There. The, the way the scripture works, it's gonna sit in you. A seed was planted today. Go ahead. <laughs> Arise, it shall teach. Uh huh. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver. He said the cross is laid over with gold and silver. That's why he said everybody got their gold Jesus pieces, right? They sit with Jesus pieces. Go ahead. And there is no breath at all in the midst of it. There's nothing beneficial from that cross. Then I want Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25. So what he said to do with these, remember, we would go, we was a nation, we would go to places and what? We were conquering to get land. So this is what the Lord said about when we ran across idols. Because that's an idol that we got in slavery. Now you see it on people's uh, walls, right? Cars, you see the wallet. Uh, yeah, their wallet, right? Everywhere. Image, uh, the little candles, right? You see it everywhere. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 25. The graven image of their gods shall you burn with fire. You heard what he said there? He said the graven image of their gods shall you burn with fire. Go ahead. So, so the point I'm making is there's no religious tolerance in the Bible. Because if there was, then the Lord would say, you know what, you can take it to you and learn a little bit about it. But the Lord said, if you found their idol, which was the Lord, burn it with fire. Because the Lord didn't have religious tolerance. Go ahead. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on it. Why? Because I know it's laid over with silver and gold. It looked good, right? You shouldn't desire it. Go ahead. Nor take it unto thee. He said, you shouldn't take it to you. Go ahead. Lest thou be snared therein. He said, you're going to be trapped in it. The lies that come with it, you'll be trapped in that cross. Go ahead. For it is an abomination He said, it's Lord something I, I hate, right? It's abomination to me. When he sees that cross, he hates it. Even though Christians got, you see a cross in every church. The Lord hate every church that got a cross in it. That's what the Bible says. He said it's an abomination to me. Go ahead. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thy house. That's why I say you got to get rid of it. He said, neither shall you bring an abomination into your house. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lest thou be a cursed thing like unto it. He said, if you bring an abomination into your house, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be cursed. So the first thing I did when I learned this is what? The cross has got to go. They got to get out the house because the Lord said, I bring a cross in here. I'm going to be a cursed thing like that cross. How come churches don't refer to that passage when they... Because churches don't keep the commandments. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you for listening to another Fire for the Shop Talk. It was great. We got an opportunity to talk to many people in our community, right? They came in and out the shop and they heard us talk about the Sabbath, who the Israelites are, things that we need to do in our community. We even had scoffers, right? A woman stood up and she went here. Nothing we had to say. But at the end of the day, the people were edified. We showed them who they were in the Bible and Lord willing, many more doors are open in our community so we can edify people. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for many more. Shalom, most high Christ bless. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 